Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Chance Brown Fishing. Today I'm going to go over the five best trailers that you can put on your swim jig or your bladed jig. So stick stick with me. Now we all know that the chatter bait is one of the most popular baits around the world. Between how effective the jackhammer is, between every other bait company now coming out with their own version of a chatter bait or a bladed jig. Um, they, it's a fish catching machine. I mean, it can catch fish all year round, even in the coldest temps. You can get fish to bite on it. So today, I just want to go over the five trailers that I use when I'm using that bladed jig, or even if I'm just doing a normal swim jig. Because I feel like the normal swim jig has become much of a lost art. People aren't grabbing it as much as they used to because they're going for that chatterbait or that bladed jig. So I want to give some love to the swim jig as well. So we're going to go over the five trailers that I use on both the bladed jig and the swim jig. Now, before we get started going over the trailers, I do wanna go over the swim jigs that I use and some of the bladed jigs that I use, just so that you can have kind of familiar with why I pick the trailers that I do pick. So for the swim jig, there's no other swim jig on the market better than the 2K Jigs deposit swim jig. I absolutely love this bait. If you can see how thin that head is, this thing gets through grass and vegetation with no issues. I never have to worry about pulling any type of vegetation off of this when I reel it in. So this is the one that I always use and I always throw it in a half ounce. I do have a quarter ounces, but I very, very rarely throw those. So all of the trailers that I wanna talk about today, to some extent is gonna to apply to the bigger half ounce swim jig. Then as for the bladed jig, this one is a 9K Elite Lures. It's an old one of mine. I mean, it's rusted. It's not one that I throw. I couldn't grab the ones that I typically throw because they're in my tackle box in storage. So I just had to search around my tackle room and find the bladed a bladed jig here just to kind of show you a reference here. My go-to when it comes to bladed jigs are the Z-Man Chatterbaits. For bladed jigs though, it's a lot different than a swim jig because I will throw this as low as a quarter ounce quite often or as high as a half ounce. But my sweet spot is a 3 8 ounce. But again, even with a 3 8 ounce, you're still going to get a bigger meteor hook. So sometimes you're going to want a bigger meteor trailer on that. So now that we got what types of baits I typically throw to help you determine which trailers I chose and why I chose them, let's get into the trailers themselves. And before we get in there, I do want to tell you if there's one video that you watch till the end of mine, this one needs to be it because the number five trailer that I pick is probably going to ruffle some feathers and it's an unpopular opinion, but stick with me so that we can go over all of them and you'll get my reasoning why. So the first trailer that I always go for, for whether it's a swim jig or it's a bladed jig, is a jointed swim bait. Something like your Yamamoto Zako. This one is a skater baits chatter shad. So this is one that Jerry created specifically as a chatterbait trailer. I absolutely love this on both a chatterbait as well as a swim jig. It has enough action on the tail to give you some um, good side to side action on a swim jig. And then when you add it to your chatterbait, the way that the blade will start moving, it just gives us even more erratic action. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal trailer to use on either kind of them. One of the reasons I love going with either the Zako or this uh, Chatter Shed from Skater Baits is because the actual body itself is really wide and thick. So it beefs up the profile. So whether you're throwing something like the 2K where it's got a really thick skirt or you throw something like this 9K that's got a really thin light skirt, this is gonna beef up your profile more and it's going to allow you to get the bigger bites this particular one is the four inch i like the four inch if i'm throwing anything three eighths ounce or bigger if i'm going under three eighths so that quarter ounce i like to use something like the smaller three inch this three inch specifically is the yamamoto zako when you look at a quarter ounce uh swim jig or a quarter ounce chatterbait they have usually have a smaller thinner hook so this three inch profile is perfect and it still beefs up even the smaller profile now my number two trailer is one that everybody has in their tackle box. I know you do, because everybody has them. A lot of people like them. A lot of people have them, but don't use them because they are difficult to fish if you fish them by yourselves. But as a trailer, they are one of the most deadliest trailers that you can put on one of these baits. And that is 
the normal fluke. The fluke is probably the most versatile soft plastic on the market. This thing, you can, you can fish it on a drop shot, you can fish it as the jerk bait like it was intended to, or you can do what I do and you fish it as a trailer. This tail here gives great action when it's paired with the wobbling action of a chatterbait. And even if you're going in with your swim bait, this is nice slender profile, doesn't get hooked up on weeds and still has enough action in that tail to elicit some big bites from bass that probably weren't going to bite, but you were able to entice them into it. Now let's get into my number three trailer. So the third trailer that I typically go for on a swim jig or a chatterbait is actually gaining a lot more popularity throughout people if um, throughout people in the fishing world if you go and you look at a lot of YouTube or you watch MLF or the um, Bassmaster Classic or the Bassmaster Elite series or or even around social media you will see this trailer on a lot of swim jigs and you'll see this trailer on a lot of chatterbaits and that one is just your basic crawl this specific crawl, this one is the um, this is the Biospawn Exo Crawl. One of my absolutely favorite crawls to throw. I love flipping this thing, but the action that this thing gives on a trailer is almost second to none. What's really cool about using a crawl specifically as a trailer, there's a couple different ways that you can rig this crawl. You can rig it normal so that it lays flat, and what'll happen is these crawls will paddle as you fish the bait. Um, really killer on a chatterbait because you're gonna get the up and down kicking motion as well as the side to side wobble. So it just gives off a bunch of erratic action. But even on a swim jig, if you fish this, you get that kicking motion and it just really gets those bass riled up and ready to bite. The other way you can rig this is rig it on its side. If you rig it on its side like this, the flappers almost become a fishtail and they'll and they will still give you action but instead of going up and down like a kicking motion it's side to side like a swimming motion so i like rigging it sideways on a swim bait just because you're not getting the action that you do from the blade on there the trailer's the one giving it all the action that it has so again i rig it sideways that way you get the side to side swimming motion versus the up and down kicking motion but if i'm not getting bit sideways i'll always flip it um flat and fish it normal and to get the kicking motion either way i put it i will get a bite you just have to figure out which way the bass wants it now let's get into the number four place here and these aren't in any particular order they're just how i'm grabbing them so the fourth trailer i like to use and this is specific to your chatterbait although i do throw them on a swim jig occasionally they're just better on a chatterbait and that is the ever-growing popularity of a straight tail worm something like this one from skater baits called the dangler or obviously your crush city freeloaders um jenko makes a really nice straight tail worm damiki makes an amazing straight tail worm a lot of people use these on scrounger heads um they'll use them on the damiki rig um but putting this on as a trailer is absolutely great so as you can see the way that the tapering ends to the back here it's really, really small, really light. That way you just get tons of action. I mean, just holding it and flicking the tail, look at the action that that gives. Again, I like these ones on a chatterbait more. That way you're not solely dependent on the trailer's action, but you also have the blade to help kickstart this tail. And once the tail starts moving, it doesn't stop. I mean, look at that. These things are just crazy. But that doesn't mean I don't use it on a, a swim bait. Because I will still put this on a swim bait. The reason I like to put this one on a swim bait is if I'm fishing for finicky bit, if I'm fishing for finicky bass, or maybe I'm not looking for size but numbers. The reason I like one of these on a swim jig is because I can still throw a half ounce or a three eighth ounce, and you don't have to worry about having a too big of a profile because this doesn't really add a lot of girth or a lot of size to your swim jig. You can put this on and fish a um, half ounce and you can still get it down to the smaller fish. So like if I'm fishing a pond, I like to put this on a swim jig because you're not going to scare the fish away thinking that it's a much larger fish than it is. But it'll still work. You'll still get a lot of subtle action. Again, if you're fishing a pond or something with a lot of pressure, those bass might be scared off. 
So being able to give it just a little bit of action and a smaller size will get those bass to bite. Now, like I said in the beginning, if you stuck with me, this last trailer is going to stir the pot, maybe cause some controversy, maybe not, because I'm seeing more and more people start to agree with me and align with the same belief I have. But the very last trailer that I will put on, and this is life or death, last resort, if I ran out of all 200 trailers that I usually have with me on my boat, and I don't have any of them, and I need something to put on my swim jig or my chatterbait, that's when I would reach for this trailer. And that trailer is the paddle tail swim bait. Now, I understand when the chatterbaits were first coming out, everybody loved fishing those with the Kitek Impact Fats. Um, Rage came out with the Rage Swimmer. Um, Biospawn had the Exo Swim. The rib swim bait with the paddle tail in this three and a half or three and three quarters size was all the rage. Everyone loved them. They worked really good on a swim bait. I'm sorry, they looked. They worked really good on a swim jig as well. As we got more comfortable, as we got more used to your chatter baits, we realized that yes, these get bit, but they actually hurt your chatter bait more than help your chatter bait. And let me explain that for you. So specifically with your swim baits, the paddle tail swim baits, what will happen is when you're fishing one of these, that boot is moving. Well, on a bladed jig, when you're fishing one of those, the blade is moving as well. And more often than not, the boot of the swim bait is actually moving at a different speed, a different cadence than your blade. And what I mean by that is your paddle might be going this way and your blade going this way at the same time and you're actually hurting the action. You're stalling the action out. So if you fish with a paddle tail swim bait and you're noticing that you can't feel the vibrations in the water, because when you fish a paddle tail or you fish a bladed jig, you know that you can feel the vibrations of it moving through the water. So if you're fishing one of these and you're not feeling the vibration, it's because the paddle tail is actually ruining or stalling out the action of the bladed jig. Where these do come into play more often is with your swim jig. Because again, with your swim jig, there's no blade on there to get the action. So when you're fishing a swim jig, if you want some more action or illicit action, besides just what the skirt offers you, it's gonna be with your trailer. That's where these can come into play. Again, you put them on there, that side to side wobble from the paddle tail will give it the action and the swim bait itself, or sorry, and the swim jig itself will follow suit with whatever the tail does. Makes it a great option. I would rather use one of the other four trailers, even on a swim jig, over a paddle tail, because usually your paddle tail swim baits are a softer plastic, and the reason they're softer is because they're thicker, but you still need to get that action out of it, so they usually use a softer plastic. And if you're using one of these as a trailer, usually the trailer keeper, um, or the plastic keeper, whatever you guys call it, uh, around the base of that jig head is going to rip them and it's going to tear them and you're not going to be able to use these as much as you could something else. Also, with something like your Zakos, these will give you the same action that these will and it gives you more of a durable bait. It gives you, to me, more of a natural profile than what a paddle tail does. I know a lot of people still use the paddle tails. I know thousands, if not millions of bass have been caught with a paddle tail listed as a trailer. But to me, if I'm throwing a paddle tail, it's gonna just be on a normal weighted swim bait hook and I'm just gonna fish it like a normal swim, weight, swim bait. I am not gonna use this as a trailer. But it is an option if you want to use it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please drop a comment. What is your favorite trailer to use, whether it be on a swim jig or a chatter bait? I love to hear what you have to say. Also, go ahead and mix and match the five that I listed here also on your spinner baits because spinner baits can be deadly too with a soft plastic trailer on there. And also, one last thing, don't forget to mix and match your colors. You don't always need to put a green pumpkin trailer on a green pumpkin jig. If you go ahead and you put, say, a chartreuse trailer 
or a white trailer or a gray trailer, it's going to give you the contrast, get the fish's attention, and it may even get you more bites. But until then, have fun on the water and good luck.